Hi everybody, welcome to Elementary Classical Mechanics, the subject where observing the universe suggests new mathematical and computational approaches that can literally transform our way of modeling and predicting any aspect of the world. Welcome back. In this lecture, we're going to begin Chapter 8, Conservation of Energy and Momentum. Conservation of energy and momentum. Conservation laws in general are really important. What conservation means is something that doesn't change in time. It's conserved. And why are they important? Well, we're going to see how they enable us to solve problems in mechanics. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, conservation of energy is valid for conservative force fields. So the force that we consider is minus the gradient of a scalar valued function of the space variables, x, y, z, the potential energy function. So we're going to look at the situation in a standard picture of where we have a particle that's moved as a result of the action of a force from a point, arbitrary point P1 to an arbitrary point P2. And we want to compute the work done in moving from P1 to P2. So for a conservative force, we've seen that there are two expressions. One is the difference in kinetic energy, difference in kinetic energy at P2, where you're going, minus where you started, P1. Also, the work is the potential energy, where you start, minus where you go. And these functions have to be equal. And these expressions have to be equal, these numbers. And so in rearranging the terms, we have the total energy, which is kinetic, which we define to be kinetic, plus potential energy at P2, is equal to the total energy at P1. Now, P1 and P2 are arbitrary. So at any point along the path, the total energy should change, should not change. It should be constant. And this is what we mean by energy is conserved. All along the path, at any point we pick, we get and compute the energy at that point, the total energy, kinetic plus potential, we get the same number. This is often referred to as a law of conservation of energy. When I just say energy, I mean kinetic plus potential, or total energy. All right, now I want to, um, so, so it's obviously going to be important to understand, well, what forces are conservative? And the main force we've dealt with in our projectile problems, um, inclined plane problems, have been gravity, the constant gravitational force near the surface of the Earth. So I want to now show the constant forces are conservative. So let's consider a general force in three dimension. AI plus BJ plus CK, A, B, and C are constants. You can easily verify that's conservative in the usual way of just computing the curl of the vector field. Clearly, the curl involves partial derivatives, and these are all constants, so that's all going to vanish. But I want to look at a particular example. When we, when we show it's conservative, that we don't get the potential from that calculation. We have to do something different. So now I want to find the potential energy function for a constant force. And I'm going to simplify this just to the situation where the force only has a component in one direction, the k direction. We'll call it, C, say, ck from our previous. And that's equal to minus gradient of v. And, of course, we see that v and 
v doesn't depend on x and y, and of course it doesn't because the force doesn't didn't depend on x and y, and we see that c is minus dv dz. All right, that's a pretty simple equation to integrate. And we see that the solution of that would be v is minus c z plus a constant. Now this constant doesn't matter because in the sense of uh, it doesn't affect the force. If we compute the gradient of this function, uh, the, the constant gets um, is uh, set to zero in that computation. But we can choose the constant uh, to have some physical meaning and to be convenient for us. So let's suppose that v equals zero at a particular point, z equals z naught. In this case, we get cz naught for the constant, and we get this value for the potential energy function. Now, if we restrict ourselves or we consider the special case of the force being minus mgk, we see that the potential energy in this case is mg z minus z naught. Okay, often we take the potential energy to be we, we, we orient our coordinate system so that z naught is on the is zero. So at the, on on at the origin of our coordinate system, and um, then we will just have v equals mg z. Another way of saying that is the potential energy would be zero on the surface of the Earth if we think of a projectile problem or an inclined plane problem where a particle slides down to the surface of the Earth. Okay, that's it for now for this lecture. Next time I want to talk about motion of one dimension under a conservative force field and conservation of momentum, which we already know about actually. So I'll see you next time.